Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. It's been a pretty easy week this week for me, personally, just because a couple days off between elections and um, Veterans Day happening today, the library is officially closed uh, for today, and then it'll be open up for its regular hours this weekend as well. So we're moving forward. We'll talk about some of the big things that are happening in, the, in and around the news, but one of the big things especially happening in Missoula is that downpour of snow we got pretty much at the beginning of this week. Um, more than an inch of snow uh, fell in the valley at the beginning of this week and weather, 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 more like uh, La Nina extended from last year's uh, weather event that didn't really affect Missoula as much, but it, it affected a lot of other places uh, in eastern Montana. Over five inches of snow have fallen over the course of two days this past Tuesday and Wednesday, turning our rich fall town into a winter wonderland. The drivers, however, were not necessarily prepared for a lot of to fight the slick roads, and luckily Missoula is pretty good when it comes to plowing and infrastructure. Hey, my road was, uh, my uh, neighborhood was plowed on Wednesday morning, so they got there pretty quickly. So the snow slowed, and we got cold temperatures throughout this week, and, you know, things are going to start warming back up. We'll probably have a, at least another um, we'll probably have a snow melt. It'll probably be pretty dry and cold and gray outside for quite some time before we get another uh, snowfall. But this is kind of like a, a freak snowstorm that kind of just happened out of nowhere. <clears throat> Anyways, most of Missoula voted uh, mostly for Democrat to represent them in the Montana State Legislature in terms of the. Uh, um <clears throat> so, oh, actually, let me rephrase that because when I'm reading it, um, I got to look at this. So, you know, most of Missoula did vote on the Democratic side of things for the state of Montana and beyond, uh, but many of the initiatives that uh, brought up through Missoula, through the uh, $5 million crisis intervention levy, that failed, and also the $19 million for the uh, um, fairgrounds improvements and building construction that they're there, that they proposed also failed as well. So Missoula over the last 10 years have supported bonds after bonds, but after the city and county increased taxes by 12 to 13 percent each so you're roughly having to pay about 40 50 dollars more a month depending upon how much your house is worth and valued at all that kind of stuff not to mention inflation gas prices were floating around four dollars to a gallon Missoula tightened their belt and for these bonds i think unanimously a lot of folks were just saying no even though there were a good amount of people that did vote for this these particular bonds but it just didn't get that uh, big enough threshold to, to vote for this this crisis levy would have been continued the operation shelter program bolstered by cares act and arpa funds which basically launched these pilot programs which uh, now they're going to be looking into alternatives to help fund these projects to help people especially during the uh, winter uh, months of missoula and um <clears throat> And also one of the things that uh, they mentioned uh, in, in an article on Missoula Current is that the state of Montana has that $1 billion surplus and our local government is looking to tap, that, uh, tap the state for some more support for these kind of um, mental health services and moving on. So election results, uh, it's kind of crazy. You know, like a lot of things, a lot of predi predictions, polling and everything like that kind of felt like it was gonna sway towards a major red wave but it kind of feels like it held the line with a, a potential for having a, a bigger majority for the Democrats in the uh, U.S. Senate, while at the same time the U.S. House of Representatives are pretty much on track for a uh, GOP-controlled House. So we don't know exactly what's happening. It's still ongoing. There's a lot of other uh, places that still need to count their votes, Arizona, Nevada. Um, of course, everything that I'm saying right now will be completely outdated, but for the most part, um, Pennsylvania had that big win for uh, John Fetterman um, against uh, Dr. Oz, uh, who was, uh, it's kind of crazy because Oprah made, a, uh, uh, made Dr. Oz, but then turned around and kind of gave John Fetterman the bump at kind of like the last two weeks before the final election. And with a majority of the vote, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, John Fetterman will be taking over as Senator of Pennsylvania. And the reason why it's kind of important is because I guess the media made it important. And then uh, Georgia, Walker versus Herschel, um, Oh, uh, Herschel Walker versus Warnock will be uh, doing a runoff election. Um, and none of them were able to get the 50% threshold for their ranked choice voting. And you know some states have enacted the ranked choice voting, which basically requires a 50% threshold upon uh, majority of votes. Uh, even though that Warnock uh, uh, had a majority of votes, 80,000 more votes than Walker did, 
Uh, so, but that's just how they've done things uh, in there as well. But right now, the runoff election has raised more than a quarter billion dollars. So that's quite a bit of money for sure. With uh, 10 million people in Georgia, I did the math, and if you you basically would give each person about $26 per vote, but which is actually kind of a, a second place to the last runoff election, which was in 2021, which uh, raised half a billion dollars for the runoff election. So there's a lot of money being put into Georgia right now, and it's definitely uh, an interesting thing as well. So here in Montana, uh, our U.S. reps will be Ryan Zinke in the west and Rosendale in the east. Uh, Montana really uh, recently redistricted, redict uh, <clears throat> so <laughs> Montana, ha well, with the census and everything, we were able to ha pass the threshold of enough people to have more than one representative for the state of Montana. So now we have an east and west district, boom. Right there, Rosendale easily beat out the competition in the east, but uh, Democrat Monica Trunell had uh, Ryan Zinke sweating for the first night with that Missoula bump that uh, gained her about a 8,000 vote lead in the uh, Tuesday night. And then they were counted the votes in Gallatin counties and Flathead area as well. Um, she conceded Thursday after the rest of the votes came in. So at the state level, Republicans are on track for a supermajority, according to Montana Public Radio and unofficial results. They'll pick up at least three seats in the state Senate and further solidify their stronghold on the House of Representatives ahead of the 2023 legislative session. Despite their apparent losses, Democrats flipped two seats with victories in Haver for Paul Truss, um, and Paul Tuss and Missoula for Jonathan Carlin. Uh, they held off comp uh, competitive challengers in parts of Indian country and Missoula, but are likely to lose two Native American majority districts historically led by Democrats. So you can find out the full story of in uh, Montana Public Radio. But those are kind of the things that are happening in and around the, uh, in America today because it's like on everyone's mind. We're still trying to figure out what's happening in uh, Nevada and Arizona, which are pretty much on track potentially favored more Democrat. Nevada, it seems like it's kind of going a little bit back, but they still haven't counted a, a big majority of uh, a fairly large county with 500,000 votes, which leans a little bit more Democratic according to uh, polling and stuff like that. So we don't know exactly what's going to happen with that. You, we'll probably know uh, by next week. So we'll figure that all out. Um, but again, um, this weekend, we're doing our Saturday drop-ins for the kids. If you have a kid who is uh, between the ages of 8 and 14, um, there is a wonderful opportunity to have a drop-in workshop here at MCAT to make videos just like this.
Things are getting cold out there in Missoula, and MCAT is doing Winter Days Camp. For three days, kids get a chance to make their imagination come to life in a series of hands-on learning from stop animation, filmmaking, and more. We have cameras, computers, and various Legos, and props to enhance their videos. Create, share, and repeat in this three-day workshop where kids collaborate and work on some of their own projects. Winter Days Camp at MCAT inside the award-winning Missoula Public Library. Sign up now at MCAT.org. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. It's time for Pre-Critic, where I prejudge a movie based on absolutely nothing but my pre, uh, uh, my prejudices and all my movie watching growing up and everything like that. So let's jump right into this next cash grab of a movie. Hey, you know, the, 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 these movies, uh, they did really well. You know, it's a Marvel movie. You know, it's a pizza movie. It's like, you know, like you can't have pizza every night for dinner, but y you can try. So anyways, welcome to the film franchise that died along with its star, Rest in Power. Uh, but the previous film made lots and lots of money, so pumping more money should allow this to have even more profit. Uh, let me save you some time. Perhaps they could uh, have a cold open that has the OG Black Panther fight some forces and, and die saving the day, or they talk about him dying saving, some, saving the day just so they can shoehorn real world tragedy into this cash grab of a movie. Anyways, the Wakanda society falls into the women with mother and daughter dealing with the himbos and men that just want to invade and take over. Uh, anyways, the new Black Panther rises from the ashes and we have a very similar fight with Marvel's version of Aquaman. Namor, uh, the, the Mariner, uh, being the once, uh, being the once on-screen villain only to be revealed as, you know, like it's like, oh, he's, he's the bad guy. He's the antagonist, but they go against the worst guy, which, you know, it's, it's always the trope. It's, it's the same thing happened with Black Adam. The same thing's going to happen in this one. The same thing happens in everything. It's like, oh, superheroes fighting each other. There must be a misunderstanding. And anyways, and stuff like that. Everything is right in the world. And remember those lost and forging a future for all. That's the message by this. The next one, we got Spirited. Hey, this movie is basically... Um, Imagine to uh, Dickinson remastered, you know, it's public domain so people can literally, like you at home can make your own uh, 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 Christmas Carol movie if you wanted to. It's, it's public domain. But this reimagining of Scrooge with Ryan Reynolds as Scrooge, but with clips, notes of uh, previous Scrooges were kind of trapped in this movie. So it's kind of like Scrooge where they kind of know they're aware of a Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol. So he kind of uses this knowledge, and he's kind of a, a smart ass against uh, Will Ferrell's character, who is the second ghost that visit, uh, visits him. And he'd be like, you know, our three ghosts incorporated is going to try to figure out how to uh, save your soul from the future, even though most of the ghosts that have already visited him are just like, I'm already fed up with this guy. This guy is beyond redemption. And that's basically what this uh, movie is going to kind of tap into is maybe it's more about not necessarily about him being a Scrooge, but more about him, this whole kind of like societal apathy that's kind of growing and just being like, I don't care, that kind of thing, rather than him being like, ah, bah humbug. It's more like, huh, all right, I guess I'll care. So that's basically what uh, you can expect from this. But moving on, I guess I'll care about this film because it's like, hey, imagine you're in a horror film. Um, you want to play dumb games to uh, manipulate into asking yourself, why did I be nice to this weird kid in school? Anyways, watch a Saw type of movie with a group of friends get put to the test. Um, some die, some live, but overall their friendship is tested, pretty much ruined by the trauma. Do you really want to go back to high school or you need to relive some of those glory days? I know I don't. Um, I didn't have a bad time in high school. It's, I mean, it's just, you know, I have, I have so much more outside of high school. Anyways, uh, last but not least is a new video game that just came out this week that everyone's kind of talking about and it's giving a 10 out of 10 IGN, who cares? Uh, after all the gods from the Greek mythology were killed off, this guy has set in another series of games where he's killing the myths of uh, Romans. Yeah, no, Norse mythology. Okay, so after the last one, he fought a couple of villains. Uh, here and there. This one's more about Thor as kind of like the main antagonist, which will probably kick off to a whole nother adventure with Odin. And then the last game, I guess it was revealed, uh, you know, no spoiler, but pretty much the kid is Loki. And I'm pretty sure they're setting up this kid to be like the big bad for the final boss. And maybe he, uh, he kills his own son. I don't know. It's, it's, it's one of those games that are just kind of like, I don't know at this point. It was like super um, murder porn. And then this next one's more like, is like, Hey, give the uh, gr grizzled old veteran a kid and then make him more relatable. Huh. 
that's basically every movie and every show that seems to be going on nowadays is the found family trope. So enjoy a night yet another uh, uh, video where you can uh, refer to uh, Kratos as daddy. <coughs> Uh, or anyways, moving on finally to uh, brand new dubbing stuff from the uh, 1953 movie uh, crime drama, uh, 99th River Street. Pet store, just a pet store. No one's gonna make a movie about me. Oh, hey, I'll be with you in a second. Just hold on. As you can see, we just got some new puppies in. We're actually looking for something a little more, um... Illegal? Is that what you're trying to ask of me? More like a middleman to take the fall in case I need to throw them under the bus. Excuse me. Well, perhaps you would be more interested in, in our number runners. They are professionals, but they are also stringers that you can easily throw under the bus, if that's your purview, after all. Throwing people under the bus is good for digestion. And I always get a second helping. Psst, psst, hey. Was that guy talking in metaphors? Afraid so. Oh, who's a good doggy? Who's a good boy? Oh, hey, uh, uh, I was nothing. Perhaps these fellows will be more than adequate to help you. Uh, okay. Is this what I get for petting a dog? <laughs> well, here. See this wallet? i like some more money in it, please. Well, maybe you can give him a specific number. Last time you got all ones. Ah, I see you brought the real brains of the operation here, didn't you? Please excuse me. <laughs> uh, hey, honey, um, kay. listen. I'm really... Whatever. Mm -hmm. Diamonds. This is how people kiss. Diamonds. Diamonds. Yes. <laughs> okay, then. Uh, please stop. Hoopa Stink is overrated. Ugh. I'm a customer, and the customer's always oh, right. Oh! You don't say now, but, you know, I'm looking at these diamonds, and I'm starting to see things a little more clearly. Is that a metaphor? diamonds are pretty clear. Yeah, yeah, and you know with the and light shiny. Reflect. How could you ever say that about Hoobastank? <clears throat> Here you go, ma'am. A light for you. Now don't look at the guy behind y'all reaching into his pocket. Let's talk business. You know, I find it really hard to talk about business. You know, I really apologize about what I said about Hoobastank. They are quite a once in a generation. Well, kind it looks of band. like the guns on the other foot. <laughs> what is this? What's going on? I run a respectable business. Pet shop and soda shop in the front and supplementing some of my cost overhead with diamonds. I'm kind of like Adam Sandler, but nicer. And yet you pull a gun on me? Ever since that diamond is a girl's best friend, my girl has been asking me and for And so one. why don't you visit a respectable jeweler? They don't have your kind of rocks. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. I just nope, need more rocks. Nope, that ain't happen. You're not getting in my rocks. I know this was a bad first impression, but this is a red state. Everyone has a gun. Just like the guy behind me. You're the one that pulled the gun first. Yeah, so? I'm just staying my ground. America. Huh. You think that you're hot? You've been over around with hot? Not. Are you going to take that from a third-rate jeweler and a fourth-rate pet store owner? Oh, wow. I really felt that in my soul. That was really oh, mean. Come on, baby. You know what you're getting yourself into. You promised me the best. The the brightest diamonds. The the fashionable clothing. And who is is overrated. Too far. Uh, how... You know, you could have used your words. You didn't have to slap her. Oh, man, old-timey movies. They got pretty intense back in those days, and, hey, no movie ever holds up in the next 10, 15 years regardless. So let's jump right into some city council. So, hey, some major things happening here and there. And as you, as you know from last week's Committee of the Whole meeting, this city moved to table the authorized campsite, which in turn will basically end the authorized campsite that the city established just last year for the first session of Operation Shelter to help curb people from basically camping out on one side of the river and moving on to the other side of the river. So there's a little bit of background. So far, the scales kind of left about 25 of the 40 plus residents um, kind of up in the air on what they wanted to do. Um, some of um, mind you that 11 of them were definitely against going anywhere. They were told and others holdouts unsure about their options since few of them have mentioned that they have pets and some of them have uh, certain addictions that in their opinion deters them from a lot of these emergency winter shelters in which the city have gone back and forth with all these folks being like, hey, you're having a clean slate of the emergency winter shelter. A lot of them are just like, hey, I have a lot of stuff. I have a pet. I don't like, 
and you know, like a lot of them, it'll say, oh yeah, like in some ways, you know, one of the big things about Missoula as well is like, it's, you know, there's a, a, a the threshold for pets and a, being in place of living, not to mention pet deposits can go anywhere between three to $500 just for your pet. So it's, it's, it is ridiculous if you don't have the right of income and money for that kind of stuff. But the city uh, presented time and time again that the cost for keeping the site open would have had been $80,000 a month for roughly 25 folks while they're maximizing the amount of time and resources for emergency winter shelter. That was their goal from the very beginning. And unfortunately, um, it was just the, uh, the, the smallest denominator of number of people uh, wanting to stay in the uh, new norm that they have created over this last year or so. So Kevin Hunt warns of future litigation against the city for denying urban camping and imposing anti-camping ordinance campaign ordinances and so this is uh, Kevin Hunt who's been a, a big advocate for a lot of the folks in Missoula who are struggling with houselessness. I don't care how many uh, of these intermediate steps you place in between uh, initially contacting these people and moving them along and finally uh, making them criminals um, we don't care uh, it's not constitution they can't do it. Uh, the second thing that's um, in important about this case is that the Ninth Circuit uh, validated the use of class action lawsuits for this. And so uh, Grants, Grants Pass has had this ordinance on its books for about 10 years. And so they've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who've been moved along, cited, and so on. And so uh, the magnitude of a damages suit out of this could be really something. Um, and uh, the third thing is that uh, Grants Pass had also had what they had done is they had not only banned camping and shut down all the camping sites in, in the city, um, but they extended it to use of certain rudimentary things that people need uh, to survive in the cold, like sleeping bags, cardboard, and minimalist structures. Does that sound familiar? Minimalist structures, um, like, like some that Rogers International tore down. Um, they said you can't do that. Okay, and so uh, the thing about this is that this is based on a, uh, a court case, um, Martin versus the city of Boise, and the Boise is out of Oregon. There's other Boises in other cities, but the part of this is that this went to uh, another level of court of appeals. Um, um, so this was referred to an anti-capping ordinance that was put into place in the town. Personally, I wish they would ban folks from coming to your home to ask if you would vote it or not. But that's just me. Uh, the city, uh, and then, you know, um, I had uh, four folks over the last week asking the same questions and voting and everything like that. So part of the litigation, Martin versus the city of Boise, uh, they looked into this a little bit more. It's like it was um, unconstitutional to uh, not, not necessarily break up the camping, but necessarily to um, throw people in jail for this whole kind of like long format kind of camping kind of issue. And what I mean by that is uh, one thing leads to another, to another, to another, to another. You print out uh, um, fines after fines after fines. You know, you can have an anti-camping ordinance, but it's the, it's just like the same thing as like you're, you're getting into trouble for doing nothing a lot of times. So it, it was very unconstitutional and a lot of the court system voted against this and they got to the Ninth Circuit for this. So it's, it's interesting, um, but that's kind of where they left this so far. It's kind of up in the air, and uh, I mean, as I reiterated again, the city of Missoula s has stated that they have more than enough beds to keep enough people um, housed, especially uh, warm during the winter shelter as well moving forward. So uh, the, next, uh, the next item that they spoke about during on city council was the new casino restaurant is proposed in an area. Um, I usually don't talk about these kind of stuff, but this is actually kind of a big deal because this is kind of moving into uh, the... Um, um, extended kind of neighborhood that seems to be growing outside of the Mullen area and this is just past Walmart and the movie theater off Mullen Road and this is kind of like in the corner and so you know they're going to be developing a lot of areas in this site including like larger um, um, units and apartments and housing dwelling units and everything like that so they're also mixing and matching incorporating um, mixed use commercial slash residential laura stevens with developmental services talks about this particular area in which the new uh, casino bar tavern will be um, so the proposed site plan for the parcel includes three buildings that are being developed separately building one will include four office suites and is currently under construction proposed building three does not yet have proposed uses or a final design 
The tavern and casino uses along with restaurant and food and beverage retail sales will be contained within proposed building 2 on the southeast corner of the parcel. The proposed building will be approximately 11,900 square feet and will have 2 stories in addition to a basement. While the 3 buildings are being developed separately, the site as a whole was planned to accommodate all 3 buildings, including required parking and landscaping. Okay, and then, of course, as you can see, um, this road right here is actually like the back road. Um, it was a part of the intersection that would be the light right past the reserve in Mullen if you're going down uh, west. And so part of this is like they're going to extend this road. It used to be a bunch of uh, housing in this particular area, but then this road looks like it's curving over and through while it gets further down into the uh, the new established Mullen area. So this is a big move for a lot of things moving forward, um, uh, just in terms of like having businesses and mixed commercial, just having amenities uh, closer to where people live rather than setting up a uh, suburbia and then just having people going back and forth trying to encourage growth inward policies and stuff like that. So part of this moving forward as well is that Laura wanting to talking about the site and plans for the casino that is pretty big since she did say it was about two stories, tavern, restaurant, and um, a casino. It also has a second floor to contend with. She also mentioned some of the regulations from the downtown master plan and how it involves this project. Title 20, section 2085-70H lists the review criteria for conditional uses. These include being in the interest of public convenience and not creating an adverse impact on the general welfare of the neighborhood, not impeding the orderly development of surrounding properties, having compatible operation characteristics with nearby uses, maintaining or enhancing traffic safety for all transportation modes, compliance with the growth policy and other applicable plans, addressing light, open space, and protection of natural features, and being compatible with the character of the surrounding area in regards to site and building design. So basically what it means is that it's going to be a, uh, a mixed-use gentrification in some ways. I mean, I mean, gentrification or gets a bad rep, but when it comes to how the city of Missoula is doing things, they're just like, we don't want to go full gentrification, we want to kind of go halvesies. They want to figure out a way so they can kind of blend um, mixed use commercial businesses and have those kind of uh, places available so people have a place to live, but also be able to go down to like a cafe near in their neighborhood and just order whatever they need to have a restaurant, even having a tavern nearby is a lot better than having to go all the way across town to go to a bar. Just think about it in terms of that. But, you know, the last quote was to reassure this uh, private property. Uh, that this is a private property and that this location reflects the needs of this area and I mean the site had a couple homes in the area but has since opened for all this construction that is happening. Um, hey this is in Missoula, uh, this is kind of like a Montana Club type business. Uh, it's called Crew. Um, it's spelled C-R-U but it's said like Crew, like C-R-E-U. So up next we have community meetings already, yes. Um, <laughs> City Council was about 49 minutes. There wasn't much to it. Um, they went into some of the details on that one as well. You can look at that as well, but then again, like I don't really talk too much about zoning and uh, you know zoning requests unless it pertains to uh, an outcry from this public and be like, hey, you know, we don't really like what you're rezoning this area to be. We want it to be mostly just residential, but this area is kind of like very mixed use. So, um, and of course, I spoke about funding put into place for local housing initiatives. So this is part of the uh, uh, the housing trust uh, oversight committee, and so through this meeting that they talk about housing redevelopment community projects in which this committee meeting is where the housing trust uh, committee, so it's like a committee to a committee and so on and so forth, that's confusing, but the point is is that they created a committee through citizens to have a affordable housing trust in which they would spend upwards of 200 plus thousand dollars a year in whatever the city uh, sold any of their property, the money and those assets would go to this housing trust. So there's a little bit of background on that. So Emily harris uh spoke about the 80,000 going to uh, United Way just to uh, help pay for uh, rent and getting people into homes. And the Centralized Housing Solutions Fund is a flexible financial assistance fund um, that supports people in preventing and ending their experiences of houselessness. And the intent of the Centralized Housing Solutions Fund is really to um, provide people with 
immediate financial assistance to meet their needs um, around housing. So that can look like paying for a, a rental deposit, paying for arrears that they owe to another landlord to get them into housing. It can look like helping to pay a portion of the rent or, um, you know, paying for an extra month of rent to support someone moving in. Um, and it is an important resource in our community that's currently functioning um, and has a high demand for support. Okay, so one of the uh, issues that was brought up during these meetings as well is uh, Emily um, thought as though, like she's been pretty much the uh, city council um, representative for the housing trust. When the people vote, she's the one that presents it to the city the committee meetings and the city council and stuff like that. And part of that was that they wanted to create this housing trust to create permanent affordable housing, not necessarily just having a, a Band-Aid put over a gushing wound to the uh, houselessness and the homelessness problem that seems to be expanding. And keeping people in homes is a lot easier than trying to find a lot of these folks a place for them to live. Because just finding your first place, rental or otherwise, a lot of times you need like a parental cosign. It's it's super weird. It's like buying a car. You can't just buy a car outright unless you have capital. So this actually adds a good amount of capital. Last year they spent about twenty six thousand dollars for this particular program, and they've saw and 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 helped well over one hundred thirty nine people at that time. So if you do the math right, you can help well over five hundred plus people with the eighty thousand dollar grant that the uh, housing trust is going to go towards this. Susan A. Patrick from United Away. Um, the group that re is going to receive this grant talks about how this money, what this money does and how it helps. Emergent and urgent issues of houselessness and housing are certainly top of mind for Eric and me this morning in light of the voters decision yesterday on the crisis intervention levy. Um, a lot of people who opposed the levy talked about the fact that nonprofits were um, best equipped to address crises, including houselessness, and that government, you know, was sort of inefficient and cumbersome. And we know that's just wrong. And we also know that nonprofits work best in partnership with the public sector. Um, and the partnership between United Way and the um, Affordable Housing Trust Fund has been, and the Housing Solutions Fund, uh, clearly illustrates that. It has been uh, a truly smooth, collaborative, productive, uh, mutually respectful process and relationship. And this this fund, it's innovative, it, it's flexible, it really does change and save lives. All right, so that's uh, Susan Haypatrick on her, uh, with this uh, community uh, housing fund. Uh, some of these issues brought up against this were geared towards uh, permanent housing solutions, like I said before. Um, the Community Housing Trust Oversight Committee. Um, this was supported by them and they voted for this. They have voted for a couple things here and there and the money that they used last year went into United Way for that $26,000, but another chunk of that money went through Missoula Housing Authority and also Habitat for Humanities, which I believe they built like one affordable house. But like, you know, like I, I'm, I'm referencing something that I kind of forgot about. So you, you don't want to take my word completely for that, but they did, uh, the, I do know that they invested in uh, Habitat for Humanities unit so they can have affordable housing. But you know, with being able to help uh, more than 100 people with this uh, short term um, Band-Aid, it really does help uh, people just actually get into housing and retain a lot of their housing as well. And in a lot of the ways, uh, vouchers, you know, you have your vouchers, but um, they haven't been as effective especially in a competitive rental market that is Missoula. Up next was the continuation of the Airbnb issue. So one of the things is that, hey, you know, you have a house, it's a residential area, and so private property, you can do whatever you want with your private property. Uh, you know, there's some HOAs that have some kind of distinction, everything like that. Well, let's not get into that. But one of the big things about this particular topic is that anybody can turn their private home into a business. And so what the city wants to do is they want to create a permitting system and fees that not only um, um, help regulate, and part of this is, uh, it's all about regulation because a lot of times they want to make sure that there's not a lot of just like people going in and out of these houses and be like, who are these people? And oh, there's a lot of things. And a lot of this is complaint driven based on noise and issues and stuff like that. Emily harris Shear talks once again from the uh, um, housing um, and she uh, spoke a little bit more about the Airbnb and the short-term housing. 
we currently have a tourist home ordinance that was adopted in 2016, um, and it currently requires all registration of all whole home short-term rentals. Uh, room rentals are exempt from the registration expectation. And currently the registration fee is $60 for the first year and then $31 for renewals annually. As of November 1st, uh, we identified that there were four, 541 unduplicated listings of short-term rentals in the community, um, it, which represents about 1.5% of the housing supply. And there are 112 short-term rentals that are currently registered with the city of Missoula um, development services. We've also seen um, just a reminder that we have seen a 25% growth in numbers of listings since early 2020. And so these, you know, like there's the month to month leases that people put in there. There's the really short term rentals. And then you got the Airbnbs, which seems to be more and more popular every single year. And ma a majority of these rentals fall into the whole uh, home rentals with about 5% being room rental. Uh, subletting isn't new for it to any of the imagination, but with the surge in tourist homes as easy as an app download, uh, the city is looking to capitalize and regulate these pop up in short term rentals. So Emily goes on to talk about some of the struggles in permitting and regulating these sites. Uh, we also are updating the registration materials, which will include more of the qualitative data that we don't get in a report like this that will help us understand um, impact of future recommendations around regulation if we were to make those um, and how units are being na used now. And that includes understanding like our people um, listing them, but they're primarily the owner occupier or um, is it a home that sits empty for half the year because they don't live here and so they're renting it out. Those kinds of things that um, we just can't speculate um, beyond what we have in the data. So we need to do some outreach with the um, community to do some of that. And one of the big things that uh, happened in the last couple of months is that the city was trying to figure out how to improve the housing stock and the availability. And so th this kind of register and just permitting thing would also open the door for a lot of folks and residents that are turning their homes to be like, wait, I want my home to be a short term rental. I'm out, I'm out of town during the winter in Florida or whatever. And I want to be able to have this kind of stuff without the rigid and regulations of uh, basically having a, a rental and a lease. So I want this to be short term and I want it to be intentionally short term. But at the same time, the uh, benefits of this also outweigh some of the costs of permitting because if you think about it, um, how regulation and how the tourist, uh, tourism business Improvement District has been put into place for the City of Missoula that helps bolster tourism and wayfinding when it comes to uh, registering a lot of these places where people can go and live and stay uh, during some short term, some longer term, sometimes just over the summer. So there's just a lot of potential for people to be able to capitalize and build uh, money through their own home in which that's what they are more than entitled to do as well. But this register would also be a, a, an available help aid moving forward as well. Not to mention it would be a little bit nicer for uh, your uh, your neighbors in your neighborhood to be like, oh, you got some joker that just uh, stayed over the weekend and they just basically blasted music every single night until 5 a.m. So, you know, it's like a whole thing. It, it can be, it's complaint driven and like anything. So it's just uh, the main takeaway from this is was to find affordable housing while exposing a growth industry that disregards what your neighbor neighbor is and cycles through people to the point of confusing liability. So the point of this topic is to monitor short term housing units and how they impact housing in Missoula. The fee isn't new either to the city lumped Airbnb with the prospect of registering your home for short term rentals for the uh, $61 for the first one and about $31 per year after that. The fees would also be used to bolster this and be able to help with folks find uh, short-term unit housing units that have been pre-approved for health and safety purposes. So active monitoring and sending letters to owners are the current model moving forward as of now. All complaints thus far are neighbor driven, but most complaints are from noise. So for more information on this and other meetings, you can go on to ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a wonderful website in which you guys can utilize yourself and be able to watch city council meetings, but also see the agenda items and see something that may or may affect you or your neighborhood, depending upon if the city is rezoning in your particular area as well. So there's definitely a lot going on here as well. Uh, the, the Bear Track Bridge is 
um, kind of on track to being done, but as of right now, it kind of feels like they're swaying people to one side of the road. Apparently, they uh, had some concrete crack. I'm not so sure, but right now I'm just kind of speculating. So we'll see how that kind of turns out in the future. But yeah, that 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 yeah, I have no idea what's going on with the Bear Track Bridge at this point. But as of right now, we're still kind of in limbo uh, before it fully opens. All right, so um, MCAT offers a bunch of workshops and a bunch of uh, other programs to help you make shows like this on your own. So without further ado, here is a promo made by our very own general manager, Joel Baird. And when we come back, we'll talk about events. Did you know that MCAT, Missoula Community Access Television, offers workshops for the Missoula community all week long? Every Saturday at 10 a.m. you can take a tour and training of MCAT. You can see all the MCAT facilities including the studio, edit suites, and checkout equipment for cameras, lights, and tripods. Every Saturday at 1 p.m. kids can stop by for stop animation. This is suitable for kids age 9 to 13. They can drop in between 1 and 3 p.m. every Saturday. Music makers can visit the MCAT studio between 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. every Sunday. You can record yourself or some friends playing music in the studio. MCAT provides lights and cameras. You supply the action. There is in the studio an electric piano and several microphones you can use. Every Sunday at 2 p.m., MCAT offers training for Community Radio, KFGM 101.5 FM. You can get help from MCAT staff to make your audition tape every Sunday at 2 p.m. Or on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday at 2 p.m., MCAT media instructors can give lessons in computer video editing, whether it's Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere, or DaVinci Resolve, depending on your needs and the computer you like to use. Every Monday at 5.30 p.m. till 8 p.m., MCAT offers a drop-in screenwriting workshop. If you're ready to share your vision and sensibility with others, you can bring your ideas and scripts to this workshop with other creatives for constructive feedback and inspiration. Or on Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m., you can learn how to use MCAT's three-camera studio. If you've ever wanted to do a talk show or create special effects in a studio, this introductory class is offered every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. All these classes are free all week long at MCAT. To learn more, call MCAT Media Instructors at 542-6228. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we're talking about events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. As you know, it's Veterans Day. Um, government buildings, public buildings, uh, post office, perhaps Veterans Day, which means the library here at the library is closed for folks. Um, it ain't happening. None of the events happening, no tiny tales, no story time. Um, but story time is happening on Saturday at 10.30 a.m. like always. But hey, this is a good time for you guys to go check out a couple holiday bazaar crafts fair. Play in a day is happening right now as well uh, for the MCT. Uh, Missoula Children's Theater does a play in a day. I'll talk a little bit about that. Holiday bazaar at St. Lutheran uh, church is happening from 9 to 3 p.m. today and tomorrow. They will have homemade crafts and art pieces and holiday decorations along with homemade candies, uh, cookies, bread, jams, jellies, and uh, relishes for sale. These are gift baskets available for silent auction. Our cafe returns for this year, so plan on having a piece of homemade pie when you visit the bazaar. Um, play in a day. Um, this is school's out and it's time for a play. MCT is excited for offer a long day. See there to camp on most Missoula Public County Public mm. uh, MCT is excited to offer a day-long theater camps on most Missoula County Public Schools no school days. Students will rehearse and perform a short original play in just one day. This happens from 9 a.m. to 5:15. Registration is uh, $65 each. Uh, $5 performances each session in a classroom, and they also have a 7 p.m. performance as well soon after. Holiday market at the Holy Spirit. S uh, church. Uh, I'm not going to say that, but Friday from uh, November, uh, Friday, November 11th from 9 to 3, Saturday from 9 to 1. Uh, this is on 130 South 6th Street East, Missoula. Hundreds of handcrafted items, antiques, and vintage jewelry 
uh, holiday decor, gifts for everyone. Uh, Moms and Little Club, the Valentine Center Community Center across from uh, the Pacific Steel Plant, an event for moms, caregivers of young children and newborns to six years to connect with other moms, enjoy some coffee and cookies for the little ones to play, have fun and get their wiggles out. Um, Missoula Food Bank meal distribution, more than ever, Missoula Food Bank is here to help folks struggling with food insecurity and does not discriminate against your income levels. You can be rich and get some fruits, get some uh, cheap, uh, fresh food if you're feeling frugal. Uh, Armistice Day of Observation for Veterans of Peace. Veter uh, Veterans for Peace is presenting uh, an um, Observe Armistice Day with us. Uh, you know, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. There will be a poetry reading, short talks uh, by members of the peace community and ringing the bell at 11, 11, 11 to commemorate the end of World War I. So this is happening at 1045. And you can check out more information by going to MissoulaEvents.net. Uh, sensational celebration at Dillard's. Uh, food trucks from 12 to 3. A silent auction to benefit Jaden Fred Foundation. Hellgate Jazz Band performance at 5 p.m. Fashion show at 6 p.m. Uh, gifts with purchase at every cosmetic, cosmetic counter. $2 donation for the National Breast Cancer Foundation for every item purchased in lingerie. Shop for a cause um, for the Hellgate Band from 1 to 6 p.m. Um, this is at the mall. Uh, can the Cats is continuing on, and you can drop off your uh, canned goods to help Can the Cats. It's a local uh, fundraising competition between uh, MSU and University of Montana out of Bozeman and Missoula to uh, raise uh, f funds and foods and stock the shelves at Missoula Food Bank and Community Center and the University of Montana Food Pantry. And this happens every single week while well, until November 19th. So you guys can donate your to food to Missoula Food Bank or to the University of Montana. You can go to the UC and be like, hey, I got some food. Or you just go to Missoula Food Bank. Uh, paint Your Own Bath Bombs, Golden Leaf uh, Studio at Southgate Mall. Paint Your Own Bath Bombs is a fun, stress-free activity designed for kids of all ages. Each hour, uh, four-hour session invites you to choose three bath bombs to paint by hand using Golden Leaf Studio's own skin-safe paint mixture. Enjoy PYOBB instructions is available for questions and assistance. However, your goal is to provide a relaxed, loosely structured environment. So it's kind of like a workshop, kind of like what we do for our Saturday drop-ins, where we just have the uh, equipment, we facilitate, and we let the kids' imaginations run wild. So you can do that at the mall, and that's going to be part of the uh, Golden Leaf Studios at Southgate Mall. Public ice skating, a glacier ice rink, uh, practice your skin skills, enjoy fun recreation from um, and they're going to do an afternoon public skate session on Veterans Day from 2 to 3.45 p.m. in addition to the regular 7 to 7.45 p.m. session. Veterans participation is free, so if you're a veteran, you get everything free at the Glacier Ice Rink today. Learning with Meaning, fall open house at the Learning with Meaning. So if you have a kid between the ages of uh, kindergarten and fifth grade, they have a great, uh, oh, actually they're also accredited for sixth to eight, twelfth grade programming as well, and Learning with Meaning is kind of like like uh, a group of people got together to create their own kind of uh, education format uh, w because they don't like the uh, uh, rigmaroles of public education life. So if you are interested in this kind of stuff, they're doing an open house starting at 4 p.m. today. Nacho night and silent auction starting at 5 p.m. Fraternity Ori of the Eagles. So Eagles Lodge is located south behind Rosar Street. Come join the f some famous nachos and huge silent auction. All, pre uh, all proceeds support mental health in our community. The Aristocats, kids. So uh, that's what they're planning for. The Play in the Day at MCT is going to be kicking off with the Aristocrats. The Aristocats, which is a uh, Play in the Day based on Disney's The Aristocats Kids, is a nonstop thrill ride of feline fun, complete with unbelievable twists and turns. In the heart of Paris, a kind and eccentric millionaires wills her in state to the Duchess, the high-end society cat. But the cat meets some um, and her three little kittens as well. Laughs and adventure ensues with a greedy, bumbling butler pulls off the ultimate cat nap uh, caper. So enjoy this uh, play based on the uh, Disney film, and it's going to be uh, happening all day today until their performance at 5 and 17 p.m. tonight. Jazzula Fall 2022 Zootone Arts is going to be celebrating 20 years of jazz in Missoula community, presenting 20 plus jazz combos, big bands, vocalists, and multi instruments over the last next three days. The 10th 11th and 12th, so you already missed Thursday. Sorry, but you're going to be able to have it for tonight and tomorrow night, and that's going to be happening at the Zach 
Jazz Zulu is ongoing. It's fun, great performances. Jazz mu music is a very important part of Missoula, in including the University of Montana's Buddy DeVranco Jazz Festival, which is a nationally known jazz festival that happens that invites many different artists and also professional artists to Missoula as well. Um, if you're interested in looking at some stars, they're doing a planetarium show at the University of Montana starting at 5.30 p.m. You can check that out. So there's a Y2K dance party, the Free Cycles. You know, the glory days of the music from the 90s and 2000s. So Black Eyed Peas, uh, hip hop and alt rock that defined a generation. Black Eyed Peas. Uh, join some fun thing games Friday, November 11th from 7 to 10 p.m. at Free Cycles. It's a $5 cover, but they have a lot of great stuff, and the, there's a fundraiser for, the multi, for Missoula's Ultimate Frisbee Club, Fish Picks. Um, Cash for Junkers is going to be a band at Union Club to wrap up your Friday night. So if you're still kind of uh, um, antsy for some winter market fun, uh, Holiday Market is going to be at the Holy Spirit Church. Like I said, um, they are doing a, a bizarre kind of a holiday gift ideas, gift baskets and stuff like that. They're doing it today, but also do it tomorrow from 9 to 1 p.m. All Under Run Roof is doing their second Stanley Passport program. So if you have a kid, a young kid that wants to go around, um, get some stamps from a lot of the partners here at the library, including MCAT. You can get a stamp in your passport and you can uh, be, uh, be put into a drawing to win some prizes for the young kids. That's happening uh, starting at uh, 10 a.m. on Saturday when the library is open again. So uh, Wild Fermentation Workshop. Uh, Dig Company, join us for an educational and nourishing uh, adventure in fermentation. Together they'll learn about science and nutrition and the ancient practice of fermentation. That's happening at Dig Company, Dig Co. Uh, story time at the library is at 10.30 a.m. MCAT dance party is from 11 to 11.45. Get the kids to uh, shake it out, uh, dance, wiggle, all that kind of fun stuff here at the uh, studio inside the library. Um, and then, then followed by MCAT Saturday drop-in starting at 1 p.m. and it goes from 1 to 3. It's an open session. Kids get to work on some stop animation, make their own projects, and stuff like that. Uh, Nicholas Mars Isaac Opeds David Friedlander is going to be at Monks. Going to be a, a series of hip hop and some fun DJ music happening that night with doors open at 8, uh, 7 p.m. Music starts at 8 p.m. Uh, $10 for 21 and up. So Dan DeBake is going to be at uh, Cranky Stand Public House. I'll never say his name correctly as long as I live, unfortunately, but it's going to be at Cranky Stand Public House. He's a great musician, solo musician, steel guitar, beautiful sound, starting at 7 p.m. at Cranky Stand Public House. Uh, we Are William is going to be at Monk's Bar. Solid State Karaoke is going to be at Westside Lanes and Fun Center, uh, Bowling Alley, the only Bowling Alley in Missoula. You can check that out. Mudside Charlie is going to be at Union Club. And finally, Chris Moon will be at the Badlander Saturday night at 10 p.m. So, um, yeah, there's something happening there. Uh, here and around, but I also wanted to mention that the uh, library is doing a National Novel Writing Month write-in starting at 2 p.m. on Sunday. This is from 2 to about close in the Cooper Room A, which is on the fourth floor, which is a public library. Come and go as you please. They'll spend nearly the entire time writing. Bring your own laptop, pens, and paper, or whatever you normally write. Electricity available. This is happening um, on the 13th the 12th, the 27th for write-ins and follow-up party in the same room for the time on December 4th. And also uh, the University of Montana does a Hulu thing. So uh, not that Hula, not Hulu, my bad. So it's Hula. Anyways, so those are some of the events that are happening in and around. There's not much happening in terms of what MCAT is all, uh, what is MCAT's doing, but I also have another episode of Music in Missoula that's going to be premiering this afternoon around 4 p.m. You guys can check that out online on our Facebook and our YouTube page. MCAT TV Missoula, you can't miss it. It's all there. Um, but if you want to learn more about Missoula events and all that kind of stuff, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. Hey, what's happening in Missoula? MissoulaEvents.net. Everything you need to know about Missoula is happening at MissoulaEvents.net. There are other events also happening. Um, the Downtown Partnership, a uh, good way to just subscribe to their uh, Facebook pages and learn more about what's happening in Missoula. But for the most part, MissoulaEvents.net is a very uh, crucial part of Missoula in terms of wayfinding and finding places to do things, learning classes, learning trade skills, um, just a lot of fun stuff with that as well. So that about does it for my morning show. I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning. It's Veterans Day. I get the day off for the rest of the day, so I get to enjoy some of these uh, fun events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. And um, I'm also going to um, kind of wrap up my show with a, a moment of zen pre uh, presented by Joshua Cook, um, who is a good friend of mine.